Oh yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region. The tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. Today we explore products made right here in the valley. Summer Garden Foods, manufacturing a feast of quality. And Easy Dough, bread making simplified. But first, here's Milsec Furniture Polish. Another great locally made product right here in the Mahoning Valley is Milsec Furniture Polish. This has been a part of everyone's household going on 100 years next year. Joyce Rubin is the owner. It is a woman owned business, which I just love that. Yes. And how did you come to acquire Milsec? Well, back in 2006, um, my partner Susan, uh, she approached myself and my husband and said the former owner was looking to sell. And that's how it all came about. You well, know, the history is there. Just, I mean, it's such a quality product. It and, is. And the line has expanded so much. How long was this the only formula that was made, the, the lemon oil? Um, since the 80s. We um, came up with the mandarin orange, or they came up with the mandarin orange, I believe, in 1982. And, and then that really expanded yes, the whole line. exactly. Because now you've got products that treat stainless steel, yes. antiques, leather, I love the one for musical instruments, mm -hmm. and the latest one is a gun stock and barrel cleaner. And what's the interesting element with this when we were talking off camera? Um, well, the interesting thing about this, this oil, there's no scent to it, so it's great for hunters. <laughs> uh, so they can't be discovered exactly. in the woods? Exactly. You know, it, there's no scent. Uh, it cleans the metal, it cleans the wood if you have a like an older fashion gun. Yes. Um, my husband uses it all the time. Uh, my niece took it to Afghanistan. She was in the Marines. It was her gun cleaner. She loved it. And what are the primary ingredients that really make this so different than other polishes? Well, um, we can't divulge the ingredients, of, of course. course. It's it a can't. top secret. Um, we have special, what makes us stand out, we actually have cleaners that actually clean and nourish the wood. There's no waxes or silicones in the product. So if you use this like on your wooden floors, mm -hmm. what I notice is I don't get that slick where, where it becomes so slippery. If you were to use another furniture polish, it really makes it, you right. can't walk on it, it's unsafe. Right, well for, for wooden floors, we do suggest diluting it with water, like two to one, mm -hmm. two parts to one, um, and, and it works wonderful. I put it in my Hoover Floor Mate, just a, a little bit of that, and use it on my hardwood floors with that. And it really conditions and, and it shines And it conditions them. and shines, it cleans. So, it's a wonderful product. There's so many different uses for it. Susan Senna is the vice president here at Milsec. It is a business ran by women, and you've been with Milsec the longest. About 13 years. And you really know the history. I mean, almost 100 years in business. I know. Tell me a bit about the founder. The founder, the manufacturer who formulated the original product, his name was Zoltan Siki, and he was an immigrant from Hungary. And he was actually a master cabinet maker, so he really wasn't thinking polish, he was thinking of his creations. But he wanted to find a formula that was worthy of what he used to make. So he formulated the polish back in 1914 for his kitchen cabinets and all of his wonderful wood creations. And then it just caught on between his clients and the word spread, so he also went into the polish business. Yeah, he was a teacher and so his students saw the value of this formula and they really encouraged him to start marketing it. So his wife, Julia, would um, collect old ketchup bottles from friends and neighbors. She okay. would have them clean them out. She would bottle the polish. And that's how they made some sales during the Great Depression. I mean, I think it's such an interesting history. And, you know, in modern times, when everything is fast and quick, how are you keeping up with, you know, the technology and the different products when you have such a valued um, quality product? How, how do you market that? Well, we wanted to uh, 
market it by the uses of it. Because when you have a bottle of Milsic in your house, you really could replace other products like a Goo Gone. And our product does not have wax or silicone, so it's safe to use as often as you want. But it can clean any wood furniture any wood product. It's even great for teak and koa wood, so if you have outdoor patio furniture, it's wonderful for that. We do sell it in Hawaii, and so they use it all over there. It's wonderful for all of your appliances. It cleans glass shower doors wonderfully. So there's all kind of wonderful little uses for it, and a lot of times our customers call us and say, you have to market it for this, and you have to try it for that. So that's how we actually expand it on our line as well, because it is so diverse. So. And what are some of the more unusual uses that you've heard of? Because I think that's really interesting that you're getting those testimonials from people that come up with creative ways to use it. Yeah, probably one of the most unusual ones we've heard recently is a lot of uh, when you, the roads are as bad as they are and they're filling the potholes with all that tar, it'll actually take the tar off the front of your bumper. It'll take the bugs off the front of your bumper. Did so, not know that. Yeah, Just I mean, the regular yes. lemon formulation. Right. You want to pour it on and let it set for a while. It'll take the tar off, take the bugs off, and it'll keep it looking nice. It won't even allow them to stick. So it's really good for that. And that was, again, a, a customer that called and said, here's how, how I use it. And so it, it is very diverse. And it is nice to have a bottle maybe in your garage for the car. You could do it on the leather interior in the car, the dash. It does great for the tire rims, even the tires, it shines them up so it could replace like an Armor All product. So it is a very useful tool. I did not know all those uses. Right. What do you see in the future? I know your latest addition is, um, you know, the gun cleaner. Yeah, we we're hoping with that gun cleaner that we could actually market it maybe to our soldiers and get, get some government help with that. And, and we're just hoping to really expand in places that maybe we're thinking outside the box we haven't been thinking of. Um, we really want to start getting more international and we're, we're peeking into Canada now. And I think Joyce mentioned we were popular in New Zealand and Australia for some reason. So any, you <laughs> well, know. Well, you need a trip down there to find yeah. out what's going on. Try I to think find out you why they like it to so travel. Much. Joanne Harubin is Joyce's mother-in-law. She does all the labeling on the little sample bottles for the Millsack. And you are just the support group back here. You really help these girls. Yes, I do. I'm retired, so this is my out. And you're a big fan of this product. Definitely. Actually, I started using Milsec when I was a little girl. My mom used it, and my job was to polish all the furniture. But that's all we did was just polish furniture. We didn't know all the other uses for Milsec. Now, this looks awfully dry. It is. Now, how will Milsec change this? Well, part? it's going to put moisture back into the wood. It prevents warping. So you even like this on the painted wood. It doesn't have to be just the raw wood. No, my cupboards at home are wood, white, and I just rub that in. It takes all the grease marks off. And in fact, I even use it on my uh, Formica counters. Where will people find your products? On our website, milsec.com. And you've got all the different locations and the stores we that you're do. located and in. And information on how to use it and where to find us. Mm -hmm. Now. When you launch your next product, you know, yes. what's in the future? Are, are you going to keep me in the loop? Yeah, we actually wouldn't mind your input. If you have some suggestions, we'd like it. And if we do come up with something new, you'll be the first one to know. All right. Okay. I'm going to hold you to that. You got it. You <laughs> got it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Today, we have got a special guest in the kitchen, Ginny Perkins, who is the creator of Easy Dough. And Ginny, I must admit that I am dough challenged. I really do not bake bread or pizza crust or anything very well. And I was very excited to receive this. And I want you to taste my efforts. I made this last night, knowing that we were shooting this today, and I think it came out a bit dense. So you are here to the rescue. <laughs> it's not bad. Your honest reaction appreciated. But it does have like mm -hmm. a little too yeah. much denseness. I it looks beautiful though, I must say. Looks good, but tastes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you think I did wrong? 
I used your your, your maker, mm -hmm. but okay. um, I used an all-purpose flower. Do you think that was one of the big problems? I think that's part of your issue. Yeah, I like an unbleached, unbromated flower, which um, is easily available at any of the same grocery stores you shop at, I'm sure. Now, Ginny Perkins created Easy Dough, and this is made right here in the valley. Why did you feel the need to make this very simple contraption? I mean, all it is is this bucket and the dough hook, you attach it, and you turn it. That's it. Um, I used to cater, and my signature was homemade bread. And everyone would say, oh, please teach me how to make bread, and I knew they wouldn't want to spend an hour kneading the bread on their counter, and I used to make my breads with a large, very large antique dough bucket that would make like 20 loaves at a time, but it was way too big. Oh yeah, now, so, and it had a hook similar yes, to this. Very similar, very simple, yet really, really efficient. Okay, very, very simple. Cup and a quarter of water. Now it says warm water. Yes. What do you mean by warm, like just tap warm? It can be tap warm. Okay. Yeah, yeah All right. that's fine. Or sometimes if I'm in a big hurry, I just pop it in the microwave for 20, All right. 20 seconds or something. Okay. So we sprinkle on our yeast, give it a stir. Now, this is instant yeast, I, which I generally use. All right. Um, they say instant yeast doesn't even need to like proof in the bucket at all. Usually, I'll let it sit for a minute or two just so I make sure it's it's happy. <laughs> and all you need to see is just a couple bubbles. Yeah. And once mm -hmm. they bubble up a little bit, yeah. you know that it's at least fresh yeast. Yeah. Next, once you've got, you let your yeast sit for a minute or two, you add a tablespoon of sugar and a teaspoon of salt and a little bit of oil, a tablespoon of oil. And then we'll just go ahead and add three cups of flour. Not hard so far, and you don't have mess all over your counter like you usually do in traditional bread baking. And then you just attach. And you attach. The, just attach the hook. Yeah. Now, what is the best way to hold this? Because I found it a little, you know, I, I was trying to figure out the best, yes. most comfortable way to grip that. Under your arm is, is the way I I like to do it. Slide that off of there. Okay, I'll move that over here. Now, I like to just straighten it out, you know. Uh -huh. Make it nice and smooth. It's called cloaking, technically, and they say your dough should feel like a baby's butt. <laughs> there you go. It does! <laughs> okay. and Duly noted. Now, why do you need Perfect. this moisture in there? It, um, it, your dough won't stick to the sides, it's just a mess factor, <laughs> pretty much. And then you just put it in your bucket, cover your bucket with a, a towel. Generally with the instant yeast, it'll rise pretty quickly. So I find mine is ready um, 20 minutes to half an hour. Just pull it out of there. Now, I like, this is where the tiny bit of mess. So this is just flour. Yeah, just flour, you can just, and All right. Put it on. And I just do that so it doesn't stick to the counter. Um, we're going to do two different kinds of bread here th this morning, so okay. um, we can just pull it. A little batch of cinnamon rolls. Probably enough for, you know. Uh, look, I mean this. There we go. That is beautiful. And that's a half fat. Yeah, that's a half fat. Okay, a so that's this much. And then we take a little bit of butter. And that is there sugar and just, cinnamon just together. Cinnamon sugar, yeah. Okay. You can buy it pre made in the store if you want to. The oven is 375 yes. and it's ready to go ready now. How to long? In the oven. Uh, about 25 minutes. Okay. 
Jenny. These are warm and fresh, and the glaze is just what a little um, maple that you put yeah, together. Confectioner sugar and with a little maple flavoring. That's all. It's very very easy. These are fabulous. Mm -hmm. My guests will be so impressed, <laughs> especially my husband. I, you have really changed the way I am going to approach dough now. Yay! I mean, really, I, I really appreciate. I mean, that's this, my goal. This is what changed my baking skills. And you can just go to their website, easydoh.com, to find more recipes and more information on getting them. I mean, that's a wonderful, easy invention. Thank you. And your recipes are the cinnamon rolls, the bread, and this is like a cinnamon roll, but it has the pesto in it. And uh, I'll have that recipe too, because you see how easy it is. And on my website at CaseyMaloneShow.com. So go there for the recipes. Thank you so much for coming sure, thank out. Thank you. Thank you. Not afraid of the bread anymore. <laughs> Yay! Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. What began in 1948 as the John Zyden Company has now grown to Summer Garden Food Manufacturing. 50,000 square feet. It's a food plant that produces pasta sauces, salad dressings, barbecue sauce, and much more. Located in Boardman, Summer Garden is true local flavor. Well, before we begin the big tour here at Summer Garden Food Manufacturing, you've got to clean up, wash up, and make sure everything's covered. Hair nets, no jewelry, nothing loose. Michelle Gross, who is in charge of HR here, and we've got Kevin Thompson, who is in charge of Quality Assurance, is going to give us the big tour. Of course, Gia Russa is the main product that's produced here at Summer Gardens, but you also do private labeling. Yes. And today, what are you doing, Scott? Right now, we're making uh, Bove's brand roasted garlic spaghetti sauce. So, the garlic smell. Now, how are you going to prep this garlic? What do you have to do to get it ready? Right now, I'm prepping the onions. My partner over there, Nick, is prepping the garlic. Uh, I believe there's more garlic than onions in this uh, particular recipe. And how much will this yield from all these onions and all the garlic? This will be a 550 pound batch for the kettles. We're here in the dry prep and Rachel Day is the lead that takes over all the prep ingredients. I mean crushed red pepper and sea salt. How many dry ingredients do you have in this room? Uh, there are five in this room but back in our south warehouse we have multiple ingredients. Gina Braun is in the tomato prep department. How many different tomato products are you bottling here? Uh, numerous tomato products, uh, a lot for the bigger end customers along with our Giarusa products. That was our start and now we do Mario Batali, uh, Bose, uh, numerous different companies. Jeff runs the uh, depalletizer here. How many jars and bottles go through here on a daily basis? On a daily basis about 35,000 jars, 35 to 50,000. Are there ever huge issues where we've had a lot of crashes? Oh, sometimes, <laughs> but since I run it and I treat it like it's mine, uh, I try to eliminate all the crashes. You know this machine pretty well, don't you? Very well. So after Jeff depalletizes them, this is where they get washed and sanitized? Absolutely, and we actually have a dud detector here where there's a sensor. And if the jar is not clean, it gets rejected off of the line. What kind of sauce is in this vat? This is a pizza sauce right here. Um, like I say, it's, it's just about ready. I'm getting ready to send it over right now. How much is in there? This is 500 gallons right here. And how does that equate in jars? How many will that yield? That'll be close to, uh, I'm going to say 3,000 jars. Michelle, it seems that so many precautions are in place to ensure food safety. Yes, that's right. We've added this metal detector right here. Um, uh, the owner decided that even though it wasn't a requirement from the USDA or FDA, we wanted to put the investment in to just add that extra food safety just in case something metal were to fall into one of our jaws of sauce. How many different operations take place in here? Well, there's about eight machines that we run all at one time. 
and I have four operators that run all eight of them. So you have the labeling, the boxing, the sealing, what else? Well, we, um, we actually detect good or bad lids as they enter the room. That's one machine. Second machine is a labeler, where we label it. Third would be the date coder. If it gets a neckband, we'll put a neckband on it and shrink it on. You'll see that a lot in salad dressings. Michelle, thank you so much for the tour. It's so impressive. I, I can understand why you get the names like Mario Batali and Guy Fieri and of course, Gia Russa made right here. You always are looking for new expansions, aren't you? We are. We're coming up with innovative, great ideas that we can you know, put forth wonderful quality products for our customers. And it's so impressive the safety precautions that you have in place. Quality Assurance Man Kevin, you are doing an outstanding job. And each and every day I imagine you, you find more and more that you have to deal with. Oh absolutely. Uh, food quality and food safety are two most important things here that we stress. Nothing gets out the door with first going through our, our full uh, array of tests. This is an impressive operation. Summer Garden, and it is right here in our own backyard. You've got to buy local. My show is always on. Watch previous segments at CaseyMaloneShow.com. Sponsored by the Ingram Law Office. Congratulations to the York family. Good luck, San Francisco 49ers. Bring home a sixth Super Bowl victory. Go Niners! Professional production, local pricing. Contact Shot and Filmworks.